I'm announcing today my candidacy for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. As leader, one of my first actions will be to call for a national inquiry into the COVID pandemic. And now you expect that from a opposition MP to say something like that. But when you're hearing it from the Liberal ranks themselves, the Liberal MPs, that they're saying, for example, some of their vaccine policy was based upon uh, politics and not public health, that's very concerning. I think it should, not just to me, but I think it should be con concerning to all Canadians. We need to look at that. Warning, censorship. Warning, censorship. Well, the federal Liberals may have joined forces with the NDP to buy themselves more time, but that certainly hasn't slowed down the federal Conservatives' leadership race. Last I checked, there have been at least nine candidates who have put their hat in the race, including Pierre Polyev, well-loved on social media and who has been a tough critic to Trudeau many times in the public eye. You also have Dr. Leslin Lewis, a lawyer with a degree in environmental studies who did very well in the last Conservative leadership race and Jean Charest, former premier of Quebec. I'm Drea Humphrey with Rebel News and today I'm standing at Maple Ridge Memorial Peace Park because I'm going to be interviewing Mark Dalton, twice elected as an MP and formerly twice elected as an MLA. I'm going to ask him how he purports to be able to win your vote as a Canadian standing against some of the other names and also talk to him a little bit more about some of the promises he's giving to Canadians that stand out from the rest of all of the other MPs. MPs that we're hearing from so far. All right, right here, we're in the city of Maple Ridge, and this is MP Mark Dalton, whose riding is the Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows area. And recently, you announced you are part of the race. You're running for leadership of the Conservative Party. So thanks for being on Rebel News. It's great to be here, Drew. Now, I actually know you. I'm in the Lower Mainland, so I'm familiar with you for a long time. But for Canadians who don't know you that well, why don't you tell a little bit about your experience in politics and why now? Why decide to try to run this time? Well, I've been involved both at the provincial and federal levels for quite some time. Actually, the first time I ever got involved was in 1984 under Brian Mulroney and helping on the campaign. But uh, been involved in boards. I first ran for nomination in 2004 and 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 tried federal, <laughs> and then went provincial in 2009, something like that, and was in for eight years. So, running as far as federally has been on my heart for for many years. So, and for me, it's not a matter of, oh, I need this for my bucket list of things to do. You know, I'm okay. For me, it's a matter of service. What can I give to Canadians? I am someone that likes to collaborate. I think that as far as a Conservative Party, we have to have, we need a big tent, okay? I come with my perspectives and all that, but I like to, I like to listen. Not only do I like to listen, I think it's absolutely uh, essential that we listen to different voices so that we can actually bring forth better policies. And I mean, we're living, we're, we have a diverse nation. And so I think that those vo voices are really important. Speaking of diversity, being conservative can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Where do you fit in on the spectrum of being conservative? Well, how about as a Canadian? I, I, my, my spectrum is quite broad. I'm Indigenous, I'm Métis, so that, that's very important to me. I'm French-Canadian also, my mother's side, so I've, li I've lived in Quebec and across Canada. My dad was in the Canadian uh, military. I was in the military myself. I'm a Westerner, I think I may be the only Westerner, maybe there's one other fellow that is running in Saskatchewan too, that is running. So I have a perspective that is very national. And so I'm not just a Westerner, although my roots go deep here, I'm not just a Quebecer, it's, it's, it's very deep. And so I, I bring that to the table. So that's, that's important that, that we see Canada as, as united. And I'm very concerned with the liberal approach right now. And it's not unity, it's uniformity.
And uniformity means conformity, means this is the opinion you've got to have. And if you don't have this opinion, if, you don't, if you're not broadcasting it, then you're at risk of being cancelled. And that's, that whole cancel culture I am very concerned about. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's Canadian. I, I, I'm disturbed that the Liberals, let's call it the NDP Liberal Coalition, okay, right. that they have, okay, well, you're free to speak as long as it kind of uh, goes along with what we, our narrative. That, that's wrong. And I've always been a person that will uh, speak out on issues. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for me sometimes to speak out. As people think that I just like to say things. <laughs> I just, I don't. It's just that I believe in being a voice. I know we, we had a conversation, I know a few weeks back, just about sending a letter to Premier Horgan on the issue of decertifying um, medical professionals that weren't vaccinated and on March the 24th, which is now passed. Bonnie Henry had said that earlier that day, it's not going to happen. You were, I mean, it's going to happen, 24th, no changing that. I sent the letter out about an hour later, later to the news agencies and to the Premier. That night, there, there was some changes. So I was glad to be involved with that. How much of an influence it had, I'm not sure, but it was the same day, a few hours after I wrote the letter. So that, that's positive. So I, but that was, that was uh, speaking out. And even on my announcement, I, I brought out some uh, yeah. issues that are, you know, I, I think that are important that aren't, haven't been necessarily brought to the table. Let's play a couple of clips from that, because you're absolutely right. You said some things that I'm not hearing from other politicians. An inquiry into how much of the government's action was about political advantage rather than public health. An inquiry into the breaches of the Canadian Charter of Rights. And the coercive measures that the government took to get people vaccinated. An inquiry into how much the government knew about vaccine injuries and deaths, and yet still wouldn't give people a choice. Now, you mentioned the V word, vaccine injury, and uh, that is definitely one of the things that I personally haven't heard as a journalist who covers a lot of vaccine injury stories um, from anyone else. So what made you decide to put that as part of your sort of campaigning platform? Yeah, so that's one piece of a public inquiry that I'm calling for. It's one, I think it's an important piece, but the first piece is let's have some accountability about how we doubled our national debt during this time. I think we need to look and examine what has happened here. It's not just, this isn't, you know, it seems in some ways it's been a, a free for all. And so that, I think we need to look at that. How effective has it been used? How much, how much accountability has there been involved? That's one thing. I think I, another thing I mentioned is as far as how much of this was based upon, upon uh, political, political uh, opportunism as opposed to public health. And now you expect that from a opposition MP to say something like that. But when you're hearing it from the liberal ranks themselves, the liberal MPs, that they're saying, for example, some of their vaccine policy was based upon uh, politics and not public health, that's very concerning. I think it should, not just to me, but I think it should be con concerning to all Canadians. We need to look at that. Thirdly, I talk about the uh, the whole area of the contracts, because there seems to be evidence, and that's what we need to look into in a public uh, inquiry, as far as how much of this was to liberal friends and buddies, because we have uh, there are some circumstances that are very suspicious, and do not put us put it past the liberals to make sure that they can get uh, have their friends take advantage of a situation. We look back to Wee Scandal and uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould, what she had to say about SNC-Lavalin. So, and then lastly, I talk about the vaccine injuries. And you're right, it hasn't been brought up. I hear a lot about it. I hear a lot about it from my, my constituents. And so, because of that, that's why I'm speaking up. I'm not trying to say here, and even this inquiry, that we, people should not be taking the vaccines. I'm saying that it needs to be a, a personal choice. You're talking about your person's health. And my question is, how prevalent are these vaccine injuries? I mean, there are, the, there are what the official sources are, but from what I'm hearing, it's a, there's a lot more than just what is officially, uh, officially uh, our injuries. So I think we need to look at that. And I'm extremely concerned if 
how much information the government knew about this and yet still have been, I would say, coercive uh, with the mandates in forcing people to take, essentially force. They will say, okay, we're not forcing you. You just can't travel. You can't visit your grandkids. You can't uh, go to, you can't do this. You can't do that. Um, we're not forcing you. You can't have a job with the federal government. We're getting, we're fired. Well, that's not coercive. I'm sorry, that's coercive. And so how much, how much of this is, has to do with political advantage, this coercion? How much of it has to do with public health? How much did they know about, about vaccine injuries? I think those are very important questions. Now, much of what you've been running on is freedom related and, you know, going the place where nobody else will go. And I think that over the last two years with the erosion of civil liberties, there are a lot of people who've been waiting to hear that. So how are you going to connect with the Canadians who are maybe disappointed with the Conservative Party because they feel like they wanted to hear these things earlier? Perhaps now they are PPC supporters or perhaps they're saying there's no point at all. My voice isn't going to be heard, so they're not getting engaged. How would you connect with these people, these Canadians? Well, I think it is a concern. And I think that we did go, I believe, in the last election, maybe too much based upon polling. And I understand you want to win, but there are still some bedrock principles. And I feel that the base that we did not, the party was not listening to the base. It's like, that's concerning. That is concerning. I was hearing it door to door. I have... I can assure you that I have been speaking within caucus and outside of caucus on, on various times. If you follow my Twitter feeds, if uh, I had a situation a couple of years ago uh, where I did a tweet speaking out, uh, could have been better framed, there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, it was becoming obvious to me even two years ago that this seems to be, poli- there seems to be some politics, quite a bit of politics involved here. I was quite concerned. And I'm not someone that was, didn't believe in, in the COVID. A matter of fact, when it was not even really had not even struck with he, within Canada, I was probably more than anyone within the Conservative Caucus bringing it forward, saying, "Listen, we need to take this seriously." I was actually talking uh, to others about maybe getting an emergency debate. This is before even the mandates happened. So, uh, and th- but after a couple months, it seemed like this is not what we're seeing in China and other places. I, so I do understand the concerns that people had, and I'm not saying that COVID is not real. I've had it a couple. Once for sure, and probably twice. Let's talk about the cost of living, um, gas prices, taxes, all of those things. What would be your plan for addressing that? Well, I think better control of the government expenditures, for one thing. The uh, financial budget officer has said this is out of control. They, they can't even go into the books. They, the Liberals are prepared to give lots of money for civil servants, uh, not just civil servants, but for, for programs, but they're keeping it lean and very mean as far as the parliamentary budget officer, even though they've, they've, the expenditures have gone way out of control. So I think accountability is something that really needs to be looked at and just living within our means. And also, I, what's, what's important is not, is not for individuals, it's not just how much they make, but it's how much they keep. And just the whole area of, of increasing taxes, including the carbon tax that's coming up, we're putting a lot of pressure the, on individuals. The inflation rate is, you know, what, 5.8 percent, something like that. And it, it is, it's expensive. Gas is, is very expensive. And so the cost of living, these are real pressures. So certainly watching our fiscal management, how, how we're spending, spending it, is making, there is a, it really impacts the bottom line for Canadians. And then what about the more contentious social conservative issues, maybe on abortion? Are you, uh, have you already addressed that publicly, where you guys would be standing? Yeah, no, I, I myself, I'm a, I'm a Christian. So, but th- I believe that there is, this Canada is a place that has been welcoming of people from all different religions, all different, different languages, cultures. And I think that's part of who we are as, as Canada. And I think it's okay to have differences of opinion, as I mentioned earlier. We need to be able to talk about things. Yes, and so as far as well, the contentious issue, meant abortion, I am, I am pro-life. I believe that, that, that um, birth begins, okay, life begins at, at conception. Canada is the only country in the world that doesn't have any parameters at all. Only, only Western uh, democracy that doesn't have any parameters. So in, I think in the last, Parliament, I voted against the having same-selection abortions. So I think um, 
sex sex sex, sex, sex selection abortion. So what I'm what I'm I think there's a lot of people that are even pro life that are pro choice that might be uncomfortable about aborting a fetus because fetus is female. I think but can we I think we should be able to have conversations and and the way that the that the liberals work is basically on wedge politics and so they can get their 35 percent okay let's talk about gun bans that is why i'm running for a party that took decisive action and banned the use sale and importation of more than 1500 types of assault style firearms you know so you know okay yes even though it's not really an issue the real problem is is crime and gangs but this is a way that we can we can we can get our wedge politics let's talk about abortion let's talk about the west and energy and all these different things of separating canada when i grew up you know i learned that in school that canada is a mosaic of people and you know it's all different parts pieces of this mosaic and make something very beautiful but under the liberals it's like we take different tiles out and throw it out and and say well you don't belong in this mosaic you don't belong in this mosaic your opinion doesn't count I think that we need to be able to come together and it's okay to be different it, let's be in the conversation rather than having a zero-sum game and I think that's very unfortunate and what about the electoral process? I know that the Conservative Party has recently raised concerns about foreign interference, the possibility of that, and then we see the Liberals more recently are, um, you know, maybe going to be working on changing how many days there are for um, counting. What Do you think anything needs to be fixed in this area? And if so, what would that look like? Well, I don't trust the Liberals. <laughs> so if they're putting it forward, I'm, I'm suspicious. So I... Um, yeah, I mean, there are certainly some issues over the years, I've, and I know this goes back to, harkens back to the reform days of, for example, for example, British Columbia only have six senators, and there being eight senators in each one, in three of the Atlantic provinces. So I know those are, those are issues, but I don't think that's going to change overnight because you need to have, you need to have agreement from, from all the different provinces. So I think, you know, there's, there's many, I think it's careful that we don't, fix try to fix something that isn't necessarily totally broken so if you try to bring in all these measures it's like what's the motivation behind it and so yes there are some some disadvantages to having a first past the post system but at the same time there are advantages that you'd normally get a bit more uh, stable government but so I, I think it's important to hear from Canadians of with all different opinions now is there anything you want to make sure the people the Canadians watching this hear from you well, for me, it really is about listening to Canadians and and uh, what are and especially right now, I'm running running for the Conservative Party. For me, it's important to hear what is the base wanting. I want to hear. It's important to listen to the grassroots. And I think, as I mentioned, that there was a sense that you're not listening. You're not listening. You've left. It's almost like you've left us. You know. I think we need to get back to the roots. I think we need to listen to, to our con conservative members. And I'm glad that there is, you know, I'm hearing some enthusiasm within the leadership race. I think that's positive. And I'm glad to be a part of, a part of it. I have some challenges. <laughs> I mean, they have some, uh, there are some qualifications. You have to raise a very significant amount of money in the next little bit. And so, you know, I'm hopeful that we'll, I'll be there. And so, and I'm looking forward to, you know, being involved in this campaign. And speaking of those challenges, what do you think Canadians can resonate with you that would make them want to support you, want to do donate to you, and want to ultimately vote for you? Well, I would say you're going to get someone with me that will not only listen, but someone that is will speak up and will persevere. I'm a person, if you look at my record, I've, I know what politics is about. I've, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've won in a suburban riding. That's a very battle, it's a ba battleground riding. And I've lost, so I know, I understand politics. I also have that, a broad life experience that I think that can resonate. I've been a blue collar worker with the Teamsters for, for a decade. I was a teacher for you know 15, over 15 years. I've been a pastor, I've been in the military. So I have that broad life experience. I'm a grandfather, I've got kids, you know? So for me, it's, it's not about me, it's about my kids and about their, their grandkids and our, ch our children as a nation and their gran the grandchildren. So it's generational. So I'm not here for just for today. I'm here for tomorrow and the f and the future. And so I, you know, there, I've heard this uh, said before. The difference between a politician and a statesman is a politician will look at just the next election. A statesman will look 
at the next generation. And that's where is my heart, is to look at the next generation. All right, there you have it, MP Mark Dalton. Where should they go to find out more about you and your campaign? Go to Mark Dalton, that's M-A-R-C, Dalton.com. If you appreciate at Rebel News, we give you the other side of the story, including when it comes to elections and leadership race. You can check out more of our coverage on the Conservative Party's race at leadershipreports.ca. And that's also where you can donate to help support our independent journalism. Unlike over 90% of the news sources you hear from in Canada, Rebel News does not take a penny from the Trudeau Liberal government's media bailout. We rely on you, the people, and we are only accountable to you, the people. So again, to find out more about the race and support our journalism, you can go to leadershipreports.ca. In a democratic society, you are certainly not supposed to be censored when it comes to interviewing a member of parliament. However, this particular MP is speaking out about an issue that other politicians haven't dared to so far, yet we have covered it extensively here at rebelnews.com, and that's a certain type of injury that platforms like YouTube don't want you to hear about. So to avoid the censorship and to hear from one of the candidates in the race for the Conservative Party, MP Mark Dalton, about what he has to say, I'm going to ask you to click on the link in the description. If you open up the box below, that will take you to the full uncensored report where you can hear from him the issues that he believes are concerning for Canadians and why he thinks he should have your vote at rebelnews.com. I'm Drea Humphrey, and I'll see you when you get there.